for my masterclass, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do two impossible desserts that cost literally cents to make. The real point about these two recipes is that they show that way before Heston was doing culinary trickery in the kitchen, Australian country cooks were doing it here first. So first up, I'm going to get you to taste something, and I want you to work out whether you know what the two ingredients are. This is a hot and cold dish. So pass them around, grab a piece. It's a kind of scone-like, cake-like bread. Anyone want to posit the two ingredients that are in there? Flour. Flour, self-raising flour. The other? Is it ice cream? It's <laughs> ice cream. It is melted vanilla ice cream. Two cups and one and a half cups of self-raising flour. So all we do, put the two together, and <laughs> because I like lazy recipes, don't overwork the two things together. If you do, the gluten will develop and you'll get a tough cake. We've got a greased and floured loaf tin, and you can see how like, hardly worked at all. Just basically folded the melted ice cream and the flour together. And I'm just going to smash that all into my loaf tin. Make sure you get your dough into the corners of the tin. And then, to contrast the sweetness of the ice cream, is some flake salt on the top. So flake salt on the top. And then we just put this into a 175 degree oven for about 38, 39 minutes. That's one recipe in the oven. Be ready very quickly. Second recipe, it's a classic. I think it's one of the 10 best Australian recipes ever written. And it's the self-sourcing chocolate pudding. Hands up, we've made a self-sourcing chocolate pudding before. The rest of you, you're in for a treat. Cal, I can't believe you've not made one of these. <laughs> this is molecular at the highest level. It's super simple. Two cups of flour. Cup of sugar. Half a cup of cocoa. Darker cocoa is going to give you a better flavour. And just stir it together. And then into a separate bowl. 250 mils of milk, 120 of melted butter, some vanilla extract, about a teaspoon, and a couple of eggs. You can, you can halve the recipe, obviously, if you want to make smaller ones. So give, give that a little bit of a, a mix-up, nothing too fancy, just make sure you, you crack those yolks. And then we're just going to pour that into the middle of our pudding. You, you want it really just to be brought together into a sludgy, kind of gorgeous mess. So we literally just brought that together into a still quite a lumpy, nuggety mix. Now, we're using an enamel oven dish. This means this pudding's going to cook quicker. And in with our chocolatey deliciousness. Eloise, you get to lick the bowl. Yes. There you go. Thanks, Matt. Here's the bit that really makes no sense. We're going to take 110 of sugar, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then two cups of boiling water. You can see you looking worried. You're thinking this isn't going to work. It's going to be a disaster. It's going to be a sludgy mess. What's you going to do with the boiling water? Is you going to drink it? What we're going to do is we're going to pour it over the top of the pudding. There is your bit of Heston magic right there. Now, that dust shouldn't work. It should be disgusting. This now goes straight into the oven, 160 degrees, until it's crusty on the top, but still sludgy underneath. You should be able to move it with your hands. You don't want to overcook it. You don't want a liquid to get too absorbed. But what's going to happen is you're going to get a spongy, crusty top, and underneath, you're going to get lovely chocolate sauce. This is going to go into the oven for about 27, 28 minutes. We're going to get out the ice cream bread, which has risen beautifully. We top it out, turn it over, and there you go. Now, a tip with this, and with any really hot bread or soft bread you're cooking, don't chop it from the front, chop it from the bottom. It's more robust down there, and you'll get a far better slice. So if you do it that way around, it slices well. If I do it this way around, what you're going to tend to find is it's going to do that. See? It'll tear. So, Callum. Way! Oh. So that is my two ingredient ice cream bread. Melted vanilla ice cream, the cheaper, the better, and self raising flour. And it's a simple, super 
impossible tea snack. Now that chocolate self-sorting pudding is ready, and you can tell it's ready because when I pull it out, it kind of gives a little bit of a, a movement there. So, proof of the pudding. Let's see how this goes. Well, you know what we need? We can't miss any of this bit, can we? That's the best stuff. That is the best stuff there. And then, just because that's what this stuff is about, So it's kind of got, there's an element of cake mix about it. There's an element of deliciousness. Now for me, if I was going to trick this up, all I'd do is a bit of this. Just a bit of salt. This is Murray River pink salt, which you would have seen, and probably a little bit more than you should have, because what we're doing is we're playing this idea of salty caramel. I'm going to put some pears. These have just been um, butter fried with some brown sugar for caramel. A few drops of balsamic vinegar. It's going to really work well with that chocolate and provide some richness to it. A little bit of creme fraiche. There we go. And then I've got one more because for the kid in the family, <laughs> no salt, just some vanilla ice cream. And this is the way I, I think is probably almost the best way of doing it. And there is Eloise's own serve yes. of mini <laughs> chocolate self-sorting pudding Thank with you. ice cream. There awesome. you go. So that's my self-sourcing chocolate pudding. Today, you're going to be cooking some of Nigella's favourite chocolate dishes. One, two, three. Oh, there is four. Oh, gosh. <laughs> four of them. Oh, my gosh. My white chocolate cookie dough pot. Oh, yum. Oh, yum. Oh. My milk chocolate brownie. Oh. My dark chocolate and olive oil mousse. Oh, yum. Last but not least, a very special one for you. Now that's a ruby chocolate cheesecake. Oh, it's the ruby chocolate. Ooh. Oh, the new chocolate. I have heard all about ruby chocolate. I'm desperate to try this ruby chocolate. And the girls are actually going to get to cook with it today. Very jealous. This is the first new type of chocolate to come for 82 years. It has a fruity, berry-like flavour, but there are no berries in it. There's no colouring in it. The colour and the flavour are all down to the beans themselves. And today is a very special day because although Ruby Chocolate's had lots of coverage in the press, only a handful of the top chocolatiers have actually got to cook with it. You are going to join that very small but very illustrious group. Oh, That's so cool. That's absolutely incredible. I've only just started hearing about this Ruby Chocolate, so to be able to actually try this today and cook with it is just... Amazing. Nigella, would you like to kick them off? Ladies, your time starts now. <laughs> the first dish I'm going to start on is the ruby chocolate cheesecake. Go, Chloe! The first thing I need to do is melt the ruby chocolate over a stove. Oh, look at that pink colour. Yeah, that's oh, just beautiful. beautiful. While the chocolate's melting, I then move on to smashing up the biscuits for the biscuit base. Chloe, watch the bag. Yeah. I'm a perfectionist. I want to nail all four dishes, so I'm going to follow that recipe and replicate exactly what Angela put up. She's ticking off as she does it, isn't she? Just check the stove top. Why? I turned it off. Just Oh, you turned it yeah. off. Sorry, Don't, sorry, it's sorry. It's the sorry. recipe. She's got this. <laughs> yeah. Come on, girls. the base of the ruby chocolate cheesecake. The next thing I need to move on to is my cheesecake filling. I'm so fortunate to be one of few people to work with an ingredient 
that's new and it's great. Well done, Chloe. I'm trying my best because I really want to do the Ruby Chocolate Cheesecake justice. Looks fantastic, Chloe. Yes, it looks wonderful. My Ruby uh, Cheesecake's in the fridge and now I'm doing the brownie mixture. Good job, Chloe. My Jella's brownies were exactly how I love them. Just so fudgy, like crispy top, and yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Nice work. That looks beautiful, Chloe. I'm happy with the brownie mixture. The texture is quite dense, but silky smooth. Two down and two to go. Um, I'm just onto my mousse. Good job, Chloe. Once the dark chocolate's melted, the next thing I need to do is add the extra virgin olive oil to the chocolate and stir until fully incorporated. Which strength olive oil is oh, the, the full the, strength one? The really peppery one. Really it's got the three, the three drops. The extra virgin olive oil adds just a little touch of spice to the mousse, and it's just wonderful. That looks lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Having Nutella on my bench is so surreal. Let's hope I do you proud today. It's yourself you have to do proud, not me. I don't think there's a person out there that doesn't love her. Remember that your white's one, you don't want them to get dry. I know one of the biggest pressure points of this mousse is getting the smooth consistency and mouthfeel. That looks so good, Chloe. You're doing great. That looks great, Chloe. It's important not to over whip the egg whites, otherwise it will go lumpy. You need to start creaming your butter and your sugar. I've done my brownies, my cheesecake and my mousse, and I've got to really get through this and get my chocolate chip cookie dough pot on the go. I have one dish to do, the white chocolate cookie dough pot. My jealous was beautiful and decadent. There's notes of savoury, and I think that comes from the sea salt. Go, Chloe, keep going! I place butter and sugar into the stand mixer bowl, and I want to get that mixture very light and creamy. Once the dough is completed and come together, I add the white chocolate chips. Go, Chloe, get in the oven. Come on. Place it straight into the oven. Good job, Chloe. I want a nice biscuit consistency on the outside and the top, and nice and gooey on the inside. You've only got five more minutes. Come on! Go, 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 go. Nice one, Chloe. Looking good. Beautiful. I'm really happy with the result. It looks very much like Nigella's. Come on, no, no. run, run, run! That's it. You got this, Adele. Come on. That's it. Come on. Thank you so much. And Thank you know you. what? Your job's done now. It's up to us. Yeah. So go on. <sighs> Thank you. Thanks, Chloe. See you, Chloe. <laughs> Firstly, appearance. Uh, Nigella, what do you think? I think the ruby chocolate cheesecake looks good, mm. and so does the dark chocolate olive oil mousse. The brownies look good, and look, the white chocolate cookie dough pot looks baked. Right, let's plate them up. I tell you what, the crumb feels nice on the cheesecake. Looks nice and thin too. Yeah. Mm, we're doing little baby canals. Nothing wrong with a gooey brownie, let's be honest. No, everything right about a gooey brownie. All right, Nigella, what do you think? 
Well, I have to say, I thought the cheesecake was very good. Mm, yeah. I thought the texture was good. I thought the base and sides were really good, smooth, thin. I'd be delighted if I'd made that. The cheesecake is absolutely Splendid. exemplary. Yeah. The brand's got a lovely, nice, kind of crunchy, yeah. crisp crust. It's, it's fudgy without being undercooked. And I think the chocolate mousse has got a delicious texture. It's really light, really quite smooth. And I think the cookie dough. It's a nice recipe. It's supposed to be a little gooey. Goo is good. And gooey is good. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. We're mad for cookie dough in my house. <laughs> uh, way better than the bloody cookie, I think. <laughs> the dish you're going to be cooking today. My passion flower. Oh. It looks intricate, but can I tell you something? You've seen nothing yet. There. Darren, so t talk us through the, the, I guess, the why do the petals open like that? Yeah, so there's a neat little trick in this uh, dessert. As well as the white chocolate petals, you also have a white chocolate collar or band. That goes on the plate first. Obviously, that sauce that you pour in melts that white chocolate. Correct. And allows the petals to... Correct. I'm torn between like loving this dessert so much because it's so pretty and it um, is so detailed and then knowing that I have to cook it kind of makes me hate it a little bit. Darren, do you want to do the honours and kick them off? Guys, your time starts now. Come on, guys, go, go. Oh my god, there's a million pages. The first thing I need to start is the dome at the centre of the flower. It's made up of four elements, the passion fruit centre, the coconut sponge, the sesame twill and the coconut mousse. The dome needs to set in the fridge, so I have to get the elements done as quickly as possible. To make the passion fruit centre, I put sugar and water in a saucepan, dissolve that and then add the passion fruit puree and then blend it for about five minutes. It gives the overall dish a really lovely burst of passion fruit to cut through the sweetness of the white chocolate. Once my passion fruit centre mixture is ready, I put it into the silicon moulds and then put it in the freezer. Billy is, like, completely on fire. She's already done the whole step. Passion fruit centres in the freezer. The coconut sponge is the next element I need to work on. The coconut sponge sits on top of the twill inside the coconut mousse stone. It provides a smooth textural contrast to the crunchiness of that sesame twill. At the moment, everything is fairly straightforward. Obviously, getting up to the chocolate petals, that's, that's going to be the tough part of this whole challenge. So I just need to get onto all of these other elements, get those done as quickly as I can to give myself enough time to do the delicate parts of the dish at the end. My coconut sponge is in the oven. Now I need to start working on my sesame twill. This is a little biscuit that sits under the sponge and adds a crunch element to the mousse dome. I combine flour, sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, icing sugar, melted butter and lime zest in a bowl. I mix it all together and then measure out teaspoonfuls of the mixture on a baking tray and bake that in the oven for 10 minutes or until it's golden brown. My batch of twills are done and they're looking really good, so now I need to start on the mousse. The coconut mousse is the most important element of the dome, with the passion fruit centre, the twill and the coconut sponge all sitting inside it. To make the coconut mousse, I put the coconut cream in a saucepan, bring it to the boil over a high heat. I whisk my eggs and sugar in a bowl and then add the two together. I return the mix to the saucepan and heat it over a medium heat until it reaches 85 degrees. Yeah, I'm being pretty careful to watch that temperature and make sure it doesn't go over because it will split if it goes over 85 degrees. Slowly going up, but I'm just waiting for it to get there. 
I've got to be really, really careful. I'm waiting for another 20 degrees, and then I'm going to cool it. Good work, Billy. Got a lot of my elements on their way, um, if not done. Now it's time to assemble my coconut and passion fruit mousse domes. So I push a frozen passion fruit centre into the mousse, top that with a sesame twill, and then top that with a sponge disc. I'm really happy to be up to this step because getting that dome out of the way, I can move on to all of the other important steps. These are the delicate little violet sugar flowers on top of the dome. They add a really lovely textural kind of crunch to the dish. So to get these right, I need to make sure I follow the recipe really carefully. To make the violet passion fruit flowers, I have some isomalt, caster sugar and water in a pan. I'm adding my glucose to the mixture and bringing it up to 154 degrees. 90, 91. I just nearly ruined my mousse by getting distracted, so I am not leaving this pot until it's at the exact right temperature. 120. Once the mixture gets to 154 degrees... 154. I take it off the heat and add the violet colouring. How are you going, Jessica? Good. Come over to integral moments, sorry. Yeah. We do like yeah, the time a lot. really good at that. Um, first pressure test, how's it feel? Um, I've never done a pressure test before. All these guys behind me are really great at desserts, so I just need to not think about that. Fair enough. At the end of the day, you want to be the underdog. <laughs> you know, in this kitchen, the underdog normally prevails. Excellent. I'll hold you to that later, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring me a dish that lives up to it and I will. <laughs> I'm really happy with how the violet mixture looks. I'm going to set it aside to cool. It needs to set really hard so I can blitz it into a powder later. The chocolate step has been in my mind the whole way through the start of this cook. It's the main visual point and tasting point of this dish. There's no flour without the white chocolate. To form these petals into that nice curve shape, they need to be tempered so that it holds its shape. The whole point of tempering chocolate is to make it nice and crisp and brittle. It's a really tricky process. It's about taking chocolate to a certain temperature, then cooling it down, and if you're not exactly right with those temperatures, then it, it doesn't temper properly and it won't hold its shape. It's just gonna go down another degree. The biggest pressure point today is the chocolate petals and getting them to fall down. They have to be tempered properly, otherwise the dish won't work. My tempering's going okay so far. I haven't got it over 40 degrees, which is where it gets dangerous, and I'm now cooling it down. I'm just trying to cool it down just to 27 degrees, so I've added a couple more bits of chocolate, um, and I'm just melting them in. It's moving down now. My chocolate's all melted and smooth, so I need to add the mint oil now. The freshness of the mint really stood out when I was tasting Darren's dish, so I really want to get that burst of flavour right to balance the sweetness of the white chocolate. I've got to work pretty fast with this chocolate because it is starting to set already, which is a good sign. I grab my acetate stencils, lie them out on the bench ready, and then smear the chocolate over. Beautiful, Billy. Billy, that looks amazing. Nice, wow. I think I'm travelling OK. I, I've just got to keep that momentum and keep cooking. Just have to move really quickly. Great work, Billy. Now I need to start my chocolate collar. Making the chocolate collar is really, really important because it has to be thin enough so that when you pour the sauce over it melts and the petals fall down. It's a really fine line in getting the thickness right. I smear some chocolate over the collar stencil, peel it off and then sit it inside the ring to hold the shape, glue it together with a bit more melted chocolate and then just hope that all set. Oh, Billy, you've made the collar. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. Great job. E excellent. I've got to say, that's, that looks great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I've got my petals and the collar setting. So I blitz up my violet mixture with the passion fruit powder. I need to make the two sugar flowers for the top of my dome. Once I've got a fine powder, I sieve that over the flour stencil, put it in the oven and let it melt for 30 seconds. 
think I'm going to make it in time. I've still got a few minutes left. I really want to get this paint done for the petals. It was something that stood out to me so much in that dessert, that yellow colour. I have a sprayed set of petals, so I'm really happy. So now I need to get everything ready to assemble for when time is up. I put the chocolate colour on the plate, the sponge, the dome. I've got all of my elements. It's crazy. I think they're all there. Yeah. We can't wait to see these little flowers bloom in front of us. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Here's the moment of truth. I really want it to work. This is the biggest moment in the pressure test. This is the scary bit. This is the panicky bit. Yeah, God. Oh, quick, 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 quick. Oh, Yay. oh Yay. look at oh, that. that. Yay, go. <laughs> It's going, it's going, look, it's going. Yay. Yay. Beautiful, well done. It's like a little round of applause there, isn't it? Oh, it's so good. All right, then. Off you go. Leave Thank us you. to taste. Thanks, Darren. Darren, what do you think? I feel really proud <laughs> that um, Billy's able to produce such a stunning dessert. You know, visually, it's all there. It's, it, it looks the same as the one that I did earlier. We haven't tasted it yet, but I'm really pleased that she's managed to get through all the elements and present such a beautiful looking dish. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? 9.9 .9 yeah, in difficulty. Yeah, 9.9 9 <laughs> in difficulty. <laughs> and, and she put it all up. That's incredible. Credit to her. Yeah. Shall we taste? Yeah, let's do it. Isn't he great? Yeah, I couldn't have done that. <laughs> All right. The sugar is nice and crisp, but still fine. The chocolate work is very fine, which we said was going to be really important. I'm super impressed. You don't realise how important that mint is for this yeah. dessert, because obviously white chocolate can be quite sweet, so that mint is there for a reason. You really need it. You need it. It just makes such a difference. It's delicious. Yeah. The rules are simple. 90 minutes, one dish, inspired by your childhood. Open pantry, and the garden's in play as well. You'll be judging your dishes on taste and how well they evoke that sense of nostalgia. Worst dish will send its maker home. Give this cook everything you have got. Marco, would you like to send them off? Contestants, your time starts now. Oh. So I'm here to do something with chocolate. And with me growing up with cooking, I kind of grew up by myself reading uh, cookbooks and stuff like that. I've never really had my mom like there for me as much. We came to Australia when I was about five years old. Mom had been a chef in Indonesia, but she had to start at the bottom again and work her way up. She was working really hard, so I was home alone a lot with my brother. We used to find mom's cookbooks that were lying around the house and we just flick through them and started making stuff. And what really caught my eyes was uh, this dish. It's a uh, pliable chocolate ganache, so it's quite soft and it's also flexible. And that really excited me because I've never seen anything like it, but I've never really had the idea to complete it until now. I've just got a picture in my head. Doing a pastry dish by any yeah. chance? Uh, so 
chocolate. So I'm adding little things that I love to eat as well. Yep. Honeycomb and orange as well. And rosemary ice cream. So I'm just hoping that it'll go together wow. as well. Because your parents were working so yeah. hard. You, you grew up in a different um, environment, don't you? That's, yeah. Everybody does, you know. Mm. It's amazing what references we do have. So if I can do it today, in the MasterChef kitchen, it will be very special for me. Because I know my mum will just, just be proud of me. Today, I'm going to try and finish a chocolate ganache dessert that I've never been able to finish before. I've got my ganache setting in the fridge, but I'm also making a rosemary flavoured ice cream to get a savoury flavour onto the plate. To make it extra special, I'm going to add some other elements, including some honeycomb. I'm worried about making my honeycomb today because I haven't got a good history with honeycomb. In the Asian restaurant challenge, I stuffed up the honeycomb twice. Yeah, it's burnt. Once I've got the honeycomb mixture to the pot, I bring that up to a temperature, which is, I think, about 160 degrees. Whisk it and put it into the silicon mat. And it's looking quite pale. I'm just hoping that it's going to get darker. There's consequences to today's cook, so I'm going to be the one going home if it doesn't go right. I'm feeling a bit of pressure. Check my honeycomb. Um, it's cooled down, but it's just not setting. And it's just so soft. What happened to the honeycomb? Uh, I didn't take the sugar far enough, so it's really soft. I gotta start that again. You've got 30 minutes to go. Yeah. Will you be ready? Um, hopefully, I've just gotta... Hopefully? Yeah, I, I will, I will. Yeah. I hope so too. I've only got 30 minutes to get this right. This is a dish, pretty much what I've loved cooked, and it's so I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to fail today. I'm going to try again, try again, try again until I get it right. Second batch of honeycomb. I'm going to be using a thermometer this time. I'm going to make sure it comes up to the right temperature. Pour out my second lot of honeycomb, and it looks good. So I'm pretty happy about it. I know I've bitten off a lot than what I could chew, but I want to keep pushing. I want to just get things done. I mean, it's not over until it's over. So I'm going to add another chocolate element. I'm going to try and temper chocolate, because um, I remember the first time when I got it wrong over and over and over again. It really made me really frustrated. And there's one point when I got it right, and that was probably one of the best days of my life. Today is elimination day. There's consequences. Uh, one of us could be going home. But you know, this is childhood. I'm evoking my memory, so I want to temper chocolate. I take out the chocolate and I pour it over the acetate and I spread it very thinly, and I'm hoping it's going to set. The chocolate seems to be working. Check on my honeycomb. Well, that's all right. Snap it. And it works. Um, it, it's looking like what I want it to look like. Uh, <laughs> This is finally in the Masha kitchen that I've got honeycomb down. Finally, everything's slowly coming together. I'm just hoping that I can just keep it together. <laughs> Less than 10 minutes ago, and I've got to start plating up. I uh, cut a circle out of the ganache and a hole in the middle. I uh, cube up the orange jelly and put that in the centre. The next thing to do is to put the chocolate crumb on top. What is that? Oh, it's just the crumble. Of what? Uh, it's a burnt. So I taste the crumb and something's really missing. Oh my god. I've got to put sugar. I can't believe it. That is such a stupid mistake. It just flew over my head. Can't really do much. Just gonna coat this in caster sugar and hopefully that it will cover the sweetness. Yes, I've taken quite a bit of risk. Um, but you know, it's all in or, or, not, or nothing. High emotion, high stakes, but it's all about getting into finals week. Five minutes to go. Come on. Come on. This whole idea in the pictures finally coming together. Looks amazing, Reynolds. I'm actually really 
proud of actually putting something like this up. I've done dishes before in the competition that I've been happy with, but never a dish like this. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. I'm really proud of myself to put up a dish like this. I think I've done more than justice to my childhood memory. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, it looks absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. So what's the dish? So it's a chocolate ganache with orange jelly, tempered chocolate, honeycomb and rosemary ice cream. Your mother didn't want you to walk into the kitchen. Yep. I really understand why as well, because it's a hard life. What this dish highlights is your ability to organise and to achieve a lot within a very small time. The amount of work that you have done in 90 minutes is extraordinary. I'd employ you. That's <laughs> vicious. Like, I'd be very grateful. To hear that is... Ah, uh, it's amazing. I've never expected to achieve this much. Um, I've always been so shy about serving food to people because I don't know how good it is or how bad it is. And to put food in front of you guys, and especially to Marco, it's just amazing to hear those comments. Um, I feel stunned, but proud as well. I'm proud of myself. We're proud of you. Thank you. But now it's time for us to taste. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, guys. That, that is the best dessert for me that uh, we've had all season. It is oh. absolutely beautiful. The chocolate mousse is delicious. The rosemary ice cream is just an inspired idea. The little tumble of ingredients, which includes what? That lovely, light, crunchy honeycomb. Those little pebbles, which is, you know, was a mistake, but in fact, worked out brilliantly. And the little shards of chocolate are all just on the money. He's 21 years of age. This is phenomenal. But what's interesting is that explosion of flavours. Most pastry chefs have a sweet tooth. That's why they make pastry. He's got a sore chef's palate, which is taken into the pastry, which is rare. And that's what will define him apart from every other pastry chef in this country, his palate. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant.